been a while since you guys have seen an instructional video from me in the gym. We're back in the gym. I very rarely get to do this in the UK because the gyms are so busy and very crowded and very cramped or they're just not open at the times I need to go down. So I've only just done pull-ups and I'm already drenched. It is what it is. It's like 33 degrees outside, but I'm here to bring you guys some more content. So today I'm going to talk about the T-bar rows. I put a video up a couple of weeks ago about my style of doing this. I want to explain exactly why I do it and how I do it. So first things first, T-bar row. Set it up like this. As you can see, this is a little bit higher than what I like. Personally, I like the ones that are flat right to the floor. That way, when it comes to picking up the weight from here, you're not, what you don't get is you don't get that anchor. Do you know what I mean? If it's too high, then the weight goes lower sometimes. You don't want that. You want it to be always, you want the weight at heaviest at the top. So it's not the best, but as you can see, it's not bad. I've seen some in certain gyms where that is so high, believe it or not, that the front end is actually lower. And it's a bit stupid. I don't know why they make grapplers like that. I think that's what they call landmine grapplers. But anyway, we're good for here. Now on this one, you guys probably haven't got this grip inside your gym, but I'll explain it, which grip you can use. You know, the normal V-handle grip, as long as the bit doesn't, it's not like a rounded bit on it where it kind of like turns around. They've got one over here, but it's for a different attachment. And the one they've got for this is this specific one, which is still a great, it's still a great piece of kit but not many gyms will have this. I, very, I doubt many gyms will have this. This is like made by a company out in Thailand, uh, Bench. I do actually know the owner. I've just met him in here recently. Top guy. I don't know if he probably watches this, but if he does, give you a shout out there. Anyway, T-bar rows, dead stop. Now we know the traditional way of doing this. This isn't the traditional way. So let me show you what I do. Get a nice foot placement, as close as possible without kind of like pushing into yourself. So my range is going to be around about here. And it's into the stomach, dead stop. So I don't know how flat my back was there. That's only because of this machine is a little bit higher due to that and due to the handle. So those two things are kind of keeping me a little bit upright. I know I should be demonstrating this in the ideal scenario, but we're not always in an ideal scenario. So I just like to explain, and that way you can understand why I'm doing this as well. So when this handle is really high off the ground, then what will happen is you don't have to go parallel to the floor. You can stay a little bit upright. That way you're pulling right into the muscle. So like I've mentioned, this exercise is the meat and potatoes when it comes to building your back. Deadlift is another one, the T-bar row, the dead stop T-bar row is another one that I credit that's built all my back. All my back muscles I put down to this exercise. Never do this first, always do some sort of pull-ups first or pull-downs first so your back's nicely warmed up, then come onto this. First sit on this, I think there was two plates on it, you know I've just realized that's actually a 15 so there's not two 20s on there, it's just a, it's a 15 and a 20. Another thing to note as well, my footwear as you can see over here. These are different trainers. <laughs> I've never bought a pair of these trainers ever before. I call these like the Bruce Lee's because I remember Bruce Lee used to wear these. Uh, they're called Onitsuka Tigers, but I always thought they were like Asics, Asics, whatever, but who cares about the brand? I'm not bothered. The point I'm showing the trainers is this, flat sole. That's the main thing. There's no cushioning in these trainers whatsoever. I didn't bring any flat sole trainers with me this time. So I had to purchase these because I was training this last week in my Nike running ones. And you know what the Nike running ones are? It's like you're walking on clouds. So I thought, no, and I don't like training barefoot. There's just so much shit on the floor to be walking around barefoot and respect the gym. Always respect the gym. And I'm pretty sure in this gym, in fact, no, I do know in this gym because there was a chap over there a couple of days ago training in some sandals, some flip-flops. And the owner came over, one of the workers came over and said, you can't wear those in this gym. You have to wear clothes towed trainers so that's a very very good gym for mo uh, sorry very good rule for all gym owners don't allow it i don't care if you feel connection with this it's all garbage and we know it is we did just fine wearing trainers but wear flat stall trainers don't get the big nike maxes anyway point i'm trying to say here let's talk about this exercise for a moment 
You've already done one exercise, so you're already pretty warmed up. You can put on whatever you feel comfortable with. You want to aim for sets of eight repetitions between four, yes, as low as four reps, four to eight reps. That's what you want to aim for. So today, because this is a new exercise for me and I'm just not familiarizing myself with the plane of motion and the way this handle is and the way this bar is, I'm going to do sets of eight. So that was a warm up set. What I'm going to do is one more warm up set so you guys can understand how I look. Let me just turn it to the side so you can see how flat my back is going to be. So I have to readjust there because this is a different exercise. Uh, so, so this is a different handle for me. Now I know there's going to be those guys as well creeping out the woodworks. Where's the negative? Isn't muscle supposed to be built on the negative? Yeah, bro. Muscle builds on negative. Therefore, I have zero muscle. So you do your... You do how you want to do it, I'll do how I, want, how, how I want to do it. Remember this, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you follow this channel, this is for longevity. I don't care about negatives. I don't care about any of this other garbage. I have done that stuff, believe me. Do you think this guy has been training in the gym for 25 years, inside the gym? I've been a gym member for 25 years. Do you not think I've tried this kind of stuff? Do you not think, do you know what, I did the negatives, I did the slow reps, I did the time under tension. Do you not think I tried all this shit? Of course I did. Tried it. Did it work for me? No. I have to think about my joints. As you can see, no elbow wraps, no belt, no nothing. I've got to keep my joints healthy. Longevity. This is what it's about. Is this the most effective way to build muscle? I believe, yes. For me, yes. For my clients, yes. So I'm going to do it like this. You can do time under tension if you want. I don't like it. Let me tell you why I don't like time under tension. If we was doing this exercise, for example, the more time under tension that we have, our lower back is very vulnerable in that position. And I believe that the more strain on the lower back, especially after doing deadlifts, this is gonna cause injury long-term. So what is my goal and my aim? My aim and my goal is to move the weight, explosive, and the more explosive you move that weight, the more muscles you're going to recruit. Think of a boxer. If you said to a boxer, punch a bag, and he just punched the bag like that, how many muscles is he recruiting to do that? A couple of muscles. Let's just say he recruit 100 muscles. Now, if you said to the guy, punch the bag as fast as possible, he would have to turn his whole body to punch that bag. Now, how many muscles is he recruiting? Maybe 1,000. I don't know, okay? That's my science, if you want to call it like that. So my goal isn't to look at how many seconds I'm in the rep, because I don't believe your body can count seconds. I don't believe it can count time under tension. I believe your body counts load and how fast it can shift that load. That's the main goal over here. When my say anything that I'm doing when it comes to heavy compounds is how fast can I get my body to shift this load from here to here? Not in a powerlifting fashion, but how fast can I get all my muscles to switch on all together at once so we can move load and then do it over and over again, rep after rep after rep. And one of the main reasons why I pause with this exercise, not only is it to save your lower back from injury, but it's also to reset every single rep. So the last rep looks exactly the same as the first rep. If I was to do time under tension, let's give you, let's take that as an example. And I was doing set one, sorry, rep one, rep two, really fast, very smooth, good. At rep eight, before my back muscles gave up, my lower back would start giving up. Therefore, it changed the angle of the body, it changed the biomechanics of my physique, it changed the way I grabbed the bar because it'd be slipping, it changed my, my shoulders will be pumped, my back will be pumped, my legs will be pumped, my quads will be locked, my hamstrings will be tight. All this is going on and all I'm trying to do right now is train back. That's it. So dead stop at the bottom, explode up. Let the bar down. Why need to bring it down slow? Why? For what purpose? You've done everything. You've used the explosive energy to get it up. Why lower it down slow? Anyway, <laughs> let me put some more weight on this. Not too much. I'm just going to put a little bit more weight on it. I'll just put another 20 kilo on this. And again, as I've mentioned before, if you follow me or not, how do you get good grip? This is how you get good grip, guys. Make sure when you're putting the plates on and you're loading plates, you're using your grip to load the plates. You don't have to use 
both hands, hold the plate, walk around the gym with it, get comfortable holding plates. They might be heavy, I can flip plates. And you want me to do it now? No, I'm not gonna do it now, I don't wanna show off. But you know I can flip plates, any plate inside. And that's how you do it. Always hold the plates, handle the plates. That is how you're gonna get a good grip. Learn to handle the plates. Sometimes you can carry two plates around the gym. This is the best grip exercise ever, and guess what? You don't ever have to think about doing it because you're never thinking about grip. It's always there. Rest periods when it comes to compound lifts like this. You don't want to be taking like uh, the set quickly. You don't want to be thinking, right, oh shit, it's two minutes. I better jump into the set. Take your time. This is a compound lift. This is not a lat pull down. This is not like a, a cable roll, which isn't as taxing as this, where you can just be thinking, do you know what? I've recovered quickly and I'll guarantee you, I'll tell you what, you take any guy, take any guy from here, right? Anyone from any gym and you say, we're not gonna count sets, uh, sorry, we're not gonna count no rest periods, ever. And if you just observe that individual and said, try and do, try and get through this workout the best way possible, I'll almost guarantee you what's gonna happen is this. He's gonna take more time naturally on deadlifts and rows, just naturally. And then when it comes to single arm stuff on dumbbell rows or cable rows, stuff like that, he's naturally gonna be like, you know what? I did this set a minute ago, now, and now I'm recovered, so I better go again. It's naturally gonna happen. Observe it next time you see anyone training, unless they're on their phone 24 seven, then forget that. But that is how it works. So the point I'm trying to say in that is, listen to your body. Your body is gonna tell you exactly how much rest time it needs in order to be effective for the next set. If you are just a clock watcher and you're thinking it's two minutes, my two minutes are up, I better go and do the next set. Let's say effectively, sorry, sorry, let's, let's just say that you got into the set quickly and you cut 20, 30 seconds short on your rest time, you might only get eight repetitions. If you rested just a 30 second more, just a 30 seconds more you rested, you might get 10 repetitions. Those two reps there are the muscle building reps. They're the reps that count. So 30 second investment of rest for two more reps on a heavy weight, that's very, very important. Careful that doesn't make your feet. So that's how you do it effectively. Now, I've built up to a weight where I think this is a good working weight for me. So I'm gonna do three sets on this exercise now, and then I'll be moving on to something not as heavy. So that is the dead stop T-bar row. If you want more content like this, you know it's coming your way. Hit subscribe, comment down below, and like the video.